Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the introduction. Hello, everyone. I just want to give a quick thanks to OSA Asakshi for your coordination, Tom, for the support. Uh, we're, like the other members, we're really pleased to be part of this technology showcase. And of course, everyone that registered today and is listening, uh, we appreciate you joining as well. So I'm going to talk today about some unique technology that we have that we call extended contact. It's patented technology that we employ within our highest performing translation stages. And a quick outline is that I'm going to talk about the typical available stages on the market today, the problem with most of them, and whether there is a better way. That's really what we're here to show you. And the extended contact bearing technology and what really it is, what really extended contact is. We'll talk a little bit about mechanical stress and how that relates to load capacity of stages. We'll do a final comparison and a little comment about uh, something similar, but then also a recap. And at the end of the presentation, I've got a, a video that really demonstrates how remarkable these stages are. It's short, it's raw, it's fun, and I hope you stay on for that so that we can show that to you as well. Okay, so what we're going to look at first is linear stages by bearing ways. And what we have here are the three main types in the industry today. We have dovetails on the left hand side of the screen, dovetail bearing ways. These are planar contacts, so these are literally just material on material. In our case, in our dovetail stages, it's commonly brass on brass. And dovetails are really well known to handle very heavy loads. They're very good at that. But what you give up is you give up sensitivity. So not highly, highly precise to make very small steps. And then in the middle, we have ball bearing ways. And ball bearing ways have what we call point contact. So these are the ball bearings themselves contacting the bearing guide at points. And they have good sensitivity but they can only handle moderate loads. And then what most people are familiar with that no translation stages use them, have been in the industry for a while, are cross roller bearing ways. And cross roller bearing ways have what's called a line contact. And that's because the bearings are cylindrical. So that line contact provides better stability, excellent straightness, but the challenge with cross rollers is they might not always fit your budget. So the cost is significantly higher than the other two I've just mentioned. Now the question is, what do all these have in common? And the problem with most translation stages in the market today are that they're made up of many separate parts. And those separate parts are assembled with screws. So, you know, screws can come loose over time and over use. And when the bearing ways of a translation stage come loose, you might not even know it uh, in your experiment. And so even a little bit, what you do is you lose the preload and then the stage really is no good. And imagine yourself in your setup, uh, perhaps on a research table or in a commercial instrument, and it's just not working right. Either delazing, beams walking, instability, and that's really hard to diagnose. And oftentimes that can be related back to a translation stage and it's really hard to determine and really hard to find. So the question is, is there a better way? And we're here to show you that there is. So if we looked at the breakout of a standard type of stage on the market, in this case, it would be a bearing stage that I showed you earlier. Look at the left here, eight parts, 32 screws. The eight parts, are comprised of a top and bottom plate for the stage, four bearing guides, and then these small pieces in the middle, two of them are ball bearings themselves that are inserted into retainers. And those bearing guides are literally screwed to the bottom and the top plates of the stage. And there's a precise alignment process that takes place called preload to ensure that the stage operates to its published specs relative to straightness and precision. But look at what we have here. Four parts, and I know it says screws, I'll explain that, but just four parts. That's the key here. 
the screws are literally these small little end cap screws on the top and bottom plates. And their only purpose is to really keep the retainers from sliding out over time. They're not attaching anything to the plates. And the key here is that we have the bearing guides integrated into the plates of the stage. They're literally machined, very proprietary high-end process. It has to be very precise to ensure that the stages will travel straight over the length of the travel in a variety of sizes. But the whole key here is that we're not attaching things to the plates. We're literally just fitting things together that have been precisely machined. And that really is the key. There's no screws needed for attachment, therefore nothing to come loose. So when we look at the extended contact, we label it as best. So this bearing weight technology, as I mentioned, is used exclusively in our highest performing stages. And if we looked at a little cutout here, close up of what's inside, it's literally a top and a bottom plate that are matched pairs throughout the manufacturing process. They have to be to be precise. And we have the bearing way itself, again, proprietary on how we manufacture that, very precise. And then the ball bearing captured in a retainer. And there's a note here that says matched diameter bearings. And what that really means in short is that, you know, I mentioned on the bearing stages that when you're attaching a bearing guide that you go through a preload process of alignment. These don't have that. The extended contact technology, we are literally fitting the balls to every stage that we manufacture, which becomes the preload. It's novel, it's groundbreaking. And because of that exact fit, it's impossible for them to come apart. It's impossible for them to loosen up. And the video kind of touches on that to show you something pretty amazing. But that's really the key is that they're exact fit and highly stable and stiff. So if we look at the chart here and we look at the attributes that are best in class, we look at the lowest overall height profile, which we all know when we're designing a system, it's important to keep our beam heights down. Well, this helps us do that. The best relative straightness by far, the highest rated load capacities by far and far. And then of course, very high stiffness. Part of that's because the stage bodies are made of steel or stainless steel in some cases. But the other part of that is because we go through a hardening process through the manufacturing. If we were looking for these stages online in our book, in our lineups, we'd be looking at acronyms that are TSD. Um, Optus Sigma are big fans of acronyms and believe it or not, they all mean something. That kind of helps us sometimes because uh, we can understand by reading a part number uh, what the part actually is. But in this case, TSD stands for Translation Stage Dream. And dream is a little bit odd, but what it really is doing is it's giving credit to the inventor. Um, our, one of our key design engineers literally had a dream about this technology. He woke up out of his dream, he did a napkin sketch and turned that into concept, prototype, production, complete product launch. And there's just a, a numerous amount of these stages that we have in different sizes, shapes, axes, um, on our website, of course, in our offerings. But uh, it's really uh, interesting to know that literally this was dreamt from one of our key designers. So what is extended contact? We're gonna show you real quick. If we look at the profile of a standard type of rod of a bearing guide, we have these rods that are inserted against the plates of the stage and we have the ball bearing in the center. And the red dots are signifying point contact, like I mentioned before. But if we look at the EXC technology, we see these red lines, which are actually arcs or small curves. And that's what we mean by extended contact. That's what it is. So we are basically creating an extended point of contact, four areas around the ball. And what that does is it reduces stress on the the ball bearings and the bearing ways themselves. And that enables higher load capacities, much higher load capacities. So if we were to look at the stress profile of a ball bearing, we could see on the left in the rod type at a point contact, we have a really high stress profile. But like anything, when we distribute load over an area, that stress profile goes down. So that's what we're showing here on the right hand side an extended profile, and then a, very, a much lower uh, stress on the ball or on the bearing guide. So that reduction in stress on the ways 
really um, enables us to have really high load capacities on these stages. And if we look at a final comparison and we look at the stage types we mentioned before, these are all the attributes. So this is really the proof in the pudding. And we can really quantitatively say, how do these compare? We look at the dovetails, the ball bearings, the cross rollers, and then on the left, the EXCs and the attributes on the left. And so you can see all the blue ribbons. And I mentioned before, low profile, high straightness, high load capacity. I mean, if the stage size is compared, equal sizes, 20 kilograms of force compared to five, five, and even 10 on the dovetails where I mentioned those excel for high load capacities. And we see a couple of blue ribs, ribbons floating over on the right. One to point out is that I'm not disparaging anything. I think every application has its particular part that's appropriate. That's why we qualify when we're talking to customers. But cross roller stages are still extremely high quality stages. And the ribbon here, I should point out, is showing that, well, the relative mass and the weight of these stages are much lighter. And that's beneficial for some applications. Uh, the EXC stages are made of steel. You have one in your hand, you can really feel it. Dense, stiff, stable, but made of steel. So um, that's just something quick to point out here. What I don't have here, because really this isn't meant to be a, a sales pitch, but I do want to mention, I don't want to get the point across that these are high cost stages, because they are not. Because of the simplicity, these are extremely high value. And if you take a look at these, uh, you'll find that the prices are extremely reasonable. So don't let that deter you. Everything that I've said today, don't let it deter you or make you think that these are really high cost products because they're not. So this technology, this kind of bearing way that we're machining in and creating the arc, I just wanna say that, can you really imagine if we were able to do this on a curved surface? Because I've been talking about linear stages. So we're talking about X, Y, Z, basically, right? X, Y, Z. But when we talk about angular movements, we look at rotation stages and goniometers. So we've been able to employ that technology into our gonies and even some of our rotation stages, complete product lines. And that's not an easy feat, but uh, again, highly stable, a lot of load and high sensitivity. So a quick recap is that we've looked at the types of bearing ways from dovetail, balls, cross rollers, and then the EXCs and that most stages are assembled with screws and that they can come loose over time. And the EXC stages have fewer parts. Uh, the bearing ways are integrated. Pieces cannot come loose and that enables long-term stability. And that the EXC bearing areas lower stress and therefore increase the load capacity of the stages. So really overall, the EXC stages have the best performance. And with that, I want to thank you, but I do want to cross over real quick to the video, Tom, before I conclude and get to the Q&A. So let me do that real quick. You've probably heard that Optum Sigma steel extended contact stages can hold a lot of weight and that they're highly stiff. We're going to try to prove it. And we're going to put this BMW on top of four steel translation stages. Let's see how it works. We're putting one stage underneath each tire. So let's see what we have here. smooth. cut the video there, Tom and Sakshi and everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I mentioned it was uh, raw and it's fun. Uh, but thank you very much for listening. And again, we appreciate the opportunity and glad to, to gather any questions and answer them for you.